A historic warm-up is on the way into next week, but cooler air is going to hit up against it, and that could cause a big storm system, as severe weather outlooks are already being outlined from parts of the Midwest all the way towards Appalachia. We'll also have a cooler and snowier side with some wind. I've got the details on everything you need to know on this storm system and more in this video. Thanks so much for joining me here. Check out sponsor Weatherbell for maps like the ones I show in this video. Free trial link to them in the description. We're almost to 3,000 subscribers, so please hit that button to get me there if you enjoy the rest of this content. Now let's get right into that pattern overview here with the future radar from the European model. As I film this video on our Thursday evening, we've got a little bit of precipitation ongoing with a pretty weak low pressure system stretching from parts of Missouri and Arkansas all the way on up there through parts of southern New England. Overall, mostly just some rain, but some embedded thunderstorms through parts of Arkansas and western Tennessee as well as northwestern Mississippi tonight. Brief hail and wind threat out of those. We'll also see that threat kind of re-emerge here along especially the, the um, Carolina coastline there as we go into our Friday afternoon here. That's not really the topic of this video, though. We're just kind of going through the near term really quickly here. As you can see, a little clipper system trying to move on out of the Great Lakes as well, so to speak, as we head in towards our Saturday morning. Maybe a little bit of light to moderate snowfall through parts of Indiana as well as southwest Ohio during that time frame. Meanwhile, our bigger system is offshore at that point. And then you can see everything pretty much clearing on out and setting the stage for our next system as temperatures really warm up with ridging across the United States into next week. Here's your snowfall out of that model blend, and as you can see, there's not going to be much snowfall over the next few days, but you can see that little clipper system we get as we go late Saturday and into our Sunday here, bringing that little shot of snowfall from parts of Indiana down through Ohio and eventually into Appalachia. That will bring maybe a quick dusting to an inch or so. Some spots through eastern Indiana, southern Ohio, as well as through parts of eastern Kentucky and into Appalachia, maybe picking up locally two to four inches at the very high end there. All right, let's talk about the overall pattern on the way, though. As you can see, temperature anomalies using our European model. Pretty tame as we head into the, the middle part of this weekend, but once we go towards the back half and towards our Sunday into our Monday, temperatures are getting 15, 20, even 25 degrees above normal. And you can see up there into the Dakotas as well as into Minnesota in this huge warm-up as we go towards Monday afternoon temperatures are looking to be around 25 to 35 degrees above normal for this time of the year. In fact, this is going to be a historic warm-up and heat wave, so to speak, for this time of the year as we head in towards our Monday afternoon with some spots hitting record highs. As we go into towards our Tuesday, you can really see that low pressure system setting up at this point as we're going to have that cold frontal line there exiting the plains. Low pressure system will likely be set up somewhere over parts of Minnesota or Wisconsin at this point using this model, and you can see that really brings that wraparound flow with cooler air back into the mountain west, whereas we're still 20, 30 degrees above normal out ahead of it. That is really the sign that we have a potent storm system here, something really worth monitoring as we head, again, as we really go into Tuesday of next week. That's when that stark contrast really happens on that temperature anomaly map. Looking at the high temperatures day by day, look at this on our Monday. All across this region, we're looking at some record highs, especially on down there through parts of Texas and Oklahoma with 70s and even 80s there, and then also on up there into parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa watching some 60s to near 70 degree to high temperatures on our Monday afternoon. Look at this Tuesday afternoon, stretching all the way from Texas where it will be near 85 to 90 in some areas, all the way on up into the Midwest where we'll be in the 60s and 70s as it looks right now. Even the Ohio Valley getting on in these much warmer than average temperatures. This is some incredible warmth for this time of the year. How's this going to set the stage for our next storm system? Let's see how the European model sets up the next system. You can see as we go towards our Monday morning, the first signs of it showing with some heavy snowfall up there through the Cascades, through high elevations in Idaho, as well as through parts of northwestern Montana. As we kind of make our way late Monday and into our Tuesday morning, snow progressing through parts of Utah, um, parts of Colorado and Wyoming. Meanwhile, we're getting the southerly flow, bringing some scattered showers on up, maybe through parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley. This is just the beginning of our next storm system, though. As that colder air is really just beginning to bank on up against that warmer than average air, I think late on Tuesday is when the system is really going to kick on off. You can see the signs of that on our European model here. Start to get some heavier precipitation in the form of some rainfall here with a warm front lifting north through the Ohio Valley and Midwest. Also watching a little bit of that snowfall through parts of Nebraska, northwest Iowa, and Minnesota. The temperature crash on the northern end of the system will be quite intense as that cold front moves eastward. 
it really looks like a late Tuesday night and into our Wednesday morning is when the European model picks up this cold front, bringing a potential severe weather event from northern Arkansas all the way into Indiana with this kind of setup. So again, this is that European model really showing us the beginning of our severe weather event late Tuesday night and into our Wednesday morning. Far northern in snowfall, but again, I think our real story is going to be this line of potential severe weather heading east towards parts of Tennessee, Appalachia, even stretching on down maybe towards the Gulf Coast through our Wednesday. The European model pulls this system out of here by the time we go towards our Thursday morning with just some remnant moisture closer to the Gulf Coast. Now, if we take a look at the GFS, it's a lot slower with the progression of this because we've got a couple different low pressure systems. Number one, bringing maybe the start of our severe weather event over the Midwest with some snowfall up there into parts of Minnesota as we go towards our late Tuesday night and into our Wednesday morning. And you can see that low would be stationed up there over parts of the Great Lakes initially. But watch this snowfall down here over parts of New Mexico, as well as into parts of Colorado. Look how that kind of edges northward while the other system heads out. Notice how that kind of restarts our whole event here with maybe another round of severe weather picking up over the Midwest, even on back down towards the Texarkana region. Some snowfall moving through parts of the Central Plains with that still that stark contrast there in the temperatures. And you can really see by the time we had late Wednesday and into our Thursday, that's how long this takes um, for the severe weather event to make it there into parts of the Ohio Valley on down through the Tennessee Valley and northern Alabama. That really shows you because, I mean, the European model would have this system completely offshore by this point. So some really big differences there between the models that really need to get ironed out as we get closer in time. So just keep all of this in mind. But I do think wherever the system tracks, the best chance for snow will be through the up, far upper Midwest, as well as on up through the northern part of Michigan and the upper peninsula of Michigan especially. Your severe weather outlook looks like this um, from the Storm Prediction Center. For now, highlighting mainly a Tuesday night risk, um, a rare early level 2 risk from parts of eastern Oklahoma and northwestern Arkansas, all the way on up there through parts of central and northern Illinois, and a Wednesday bringing this event a little bit further eastward, so exiting parts of Missouri and eastern Arkansas into parts of northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, through Tennessee, Kentucky, southern Indiana, and southern Ohio getting in on that severe weather probabilities. And again, we're still almost a week out from the system, lots to kind of pinpoint, but looking at that mid-level jet out of the European model, we're kind of looking for that subtropical jet and this polar jet stream to fuse, and that would really help to bring a stronger trough here. You can see pretty much flat jet streams, more of a zonal flow for the meantime, but as we head late Monday and into Tuesday, we're going to see a really big transition here in those jet streams, and look at how we get this U-shaped trough, a very strong little dip in the jet stream there, moving through parts of the central United States, and especially picking on up through, through parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. That is the indication that we need for a positively tilted trough, which is not our most severe type of trough, but what it is is strong enough with those winds to where if we get enough of a strong low-level jet, um, which is winds closer to the surface, we could definitely see all modes of severe weather. And you can see, look how that already picks on up. You can see late Tuesday, the European model, making it clear that we're likely going to have a low-level jet kicking up out of this system. Even though the GFS shows the timing a bit later, we still see that low-level jet kick up, which means that there is very high likelihood that as long as the storm system remains potent enough, we will probably see an all-hazard severe weather threat develop out of it. One last thing to keep note of is those dew points, which is essentially your moisture content. Um, really anything above 55 to 60 is sufficient enough for severe weather. But will these dew points closer to Texas and Louisiana head northward to support the system? Of course, down closer to the Gulf Coast, it is always very moist. But look at how, as we go late Tuesday... And this area here from the Gulf Coast all the way end up there towards the Midwest fills on up with those 55 to 65 degree dew points. Very sufficient moisture in place. And look at how the cold front is going to bank up and press up against those warmer, um, more moist areas here and continue to slide that front eastward. I think as we go through Wednesday, the strong strongness of this front will really continue to kind of level on up there. Looking at my O&W severe scale, it goes from 1 to 7, kind of reviving it here, bringing it back on the channel. You can see we've, uh, 1 is for low certainty, maybe a few severe storms possible, nothing out of the question at this point. 2 and 3 is when you start to get up into those, you know, maybe moderate severe weather chances. Once you're starting to get 4 or 5 and above, you're talking more of an outbreak. And at this point, I don't think we can get up into that outbreak talk, or at least into that outbreak talk where we're saying there is definitely going to be severe weather outbreak across the country with major tornadoes. But what we can say is that there is a likely 2 of 7 on my scale from parts of northeast Oklahoma on up there through southern Wisconsin and southwestern Michigan for Tuesday and Tuesday night of next week. 
um, th through parts of Northeast Missouri and Western Illinois. That's where I expect the highest threat. That's where I've got a three of seven already highlighted, which is where there's at least that increased severe weather potential. You can see, even though we have kind of model differences as we go, especially into Wednesday here with the GFS falling way behind the Euro, I think our best chance for some sort of severe weather either Wednesday or Wednesday night looks to be centered down here from parts of the Southern Ohio Valley back on down through parts of Arkansas and Northern Mississippi. So again, we'll keep watch on that. There's a lot that still needs to be pinpointed. I can't reiterate that enough. And that does include these wind gusts as well. But you can see here, it does look like as we go late Monday and into our early Tuesday, those winds are really going to ramp on up, especially as we go towards mid to back half of our Tuesday. Look at this. That is just some intense wind over parts of New Mexico, Northeast Arizona, um, some of those gusts in the higher terrain there and, and even in parts of the southern high plains, 50, 60, 70 mile per hour gusts, not out of the question. That is some insane wind there. Um, so we'll definitely get some high wind warnings, maybe some fire threat as well in those drier areas. Um, and then you can see also looking at those wind gusts continuing there um, into the Great Lakes region. We will watch that um, as we head uh, through the rest of the system Tuesday and into Wednesday. Also, one last thing to talk about is that snowfall here, those totals being indicated by the Euro model. Again, still very early. Doesn't look like much snowfall heading eastward. And again, those are the these are actually those Euro ensembles. So this is a collection of different models showing extremely heavy snow through the Cascades, um, through parts of Idaho, high elevations of Wyoming, um, high elevations of Colorado. Not much eastward from there, though, with just some light snow scraping the northern tier. Um, we'll have to see if this could turn into a heavy event over the upper Midwest, though. So again, still lots to talk about. Um, so if you want to get those discussions as they come in, um, please hit that subscribe button. Here are the credits. Um, some things in this video were those European model maps from Weatherbell. So get the free trial in the description.